Hello and welcome back and that's right it's time for another quick form comparison and today we are looking at the QNAP TS264 and we're comparing against this the Terramaster F2423. We're going to look at five reasons why you might want to go for the Terramaster and five reasons why you might want to go for the QNAP and we're going to do it as quickly as possible. So, first and foremost, when it comes to the QNAP, it's got to be the software. QTS um, for their platform, uh, the EXT file system there, is just fantastic in terms of its abilities, the number of client applications it includes, just the sheer scope of what it is capable of, along with just the sheer usability of it. It has evolved a great deal over the last 10 to 15 years, and that platform, along with supporting a lot of cloud services and integrating with a lot of um, uh, cloud managed SAAS and PAAS services for virtual machines, machines, um, for general containers there with the Linux applications, all of it built in alongside a whole multitude of different multimedia applications as well. It is by far the more advanced platform of the two. And regardless of the specifications, which I am sure on are on screen right now, you have to look at the QNAP NAS there as both a hardware and software purchase there because it's a combination of both. All NAS devices are, when it comes to the QNAP, it has to be said that you are getting better software overall. The TOS platform is very, very good but it lacks a lot of the AAA plus applications that the QNAP one does include. And that doesn't even get into the you know gritty detail of just how some of those applications are delivered. Now, when it comes to the TerraMaster, the first thing we've got to talk about there is of course value and price. The F2, by far one of the, the most affordable current generation two base that are Intel powered in the market right now. It is absolutely beastly in terms of the price you are getting in what you're getting. You're getting that Intel N5105 CPU, exactly the same CPU. You're getting the same amount of memory at four gigabit, yeah, um, gigabyte, I should say. You're getting 2.5 GPE on the rear. You are getting basically with M2 NVMe's on board as well. The same kind of hardware as a base level, but in some cases you are spending as little, uh, as much as 100 to 180 nicker difference there. It is just a great offer NAS, and on top of that, it is regularly on sale at Amazon during their Prime Day event, as well as in multiple locations during things like uh, Black Friday there. So again, when it comes to price and value, it's just generally a fantastic hardware purchase there. However, when we make our way back to the QNAP, it's also worth highlighting that QNAP has a little something something under the radar and that is a PCIe upgrade slot. So although both of these systems are very similar in their hardware, one of the things that makes the QNAP stand out quite substantially is the fact that it has that PCIe upgrade. That PCIe upgrade can be utilized for 10 GBE upgrade cards. It can be used for Wi-Fi 6 upgrade cards. It can be used for adding more M2 NVMe slots on there. It can be used for combo cards that have both NVMe and 10 GBE output on there, and there are more cards to come. So ultimately, when it comes to scalability and upgradability, that QNAP there and that PCIe slot allow you to future-proof the system a great deal more several years into its life in the way the TerraMaster doesn't really have that same kind of scalability for the most part. Now, moving back to that TerraMaster there, we can talk about one little feature that they and Synology have, and for some reason, no one else, and that is a flexible RAID configuration. So with this system you buy a couple of drives or you might buy one drive if you like and get the system running there later on as your data starts to fill up you might want to introduce bigger and better drives and thanks to flexible storage systems like T-RAID from TerraMaster you can mix and match your drives whereas traditional RAID if you try to mix and match different drive capacities in a normal RAID it will class every single drive visible as the smallest available capacity in a flexible RAID system it just makes sure that it has the largest available drives worth of redundancy in place and then absorbs all of the available storage. Now on a two bay that may not sound as useful there's lots of users that will gradually upgrade their system bit by bit and want to integrate those larger drives more effectively while still not losing any kind of meaningful performance there. And once you factor in expansion devices that connect via USB that flexible storage system that flexible RAID in you know your own kind of creative mix match storage pools will be advantageous. So again I think it's an overlooked feature that most of these other brands just don't seem to be integrating with but Synology and TerraMaster do include in that and I'm really really surprised that QNAP generally the innovators of the software services in the NAS industry have yet to integrate this but what they have integrated there is their KVM application there their HDMI output application known as HD station hybrid desk station now both of these devices arrive with an HDMI output there but Whereas on the TerraMaster, that HDMI output only really gives you command line and no kind of graphical user interface, QNAP has integrated a complete parallel 
user interface, an, inter um, an HDMI based UI that allows to install its own apps, allows you to control via keyboard, video, and mouse, control via a network remote control, an infrared remote control, a Bluetooth remote control um, with a dongle. And it allows you to run all of the NAS services via the network and remotely over the internet and this HDMI output for multimedia, for surveillance, uh, for Plex Media Server on its own, for a virtual machine, for a myriad of different first and third party services all integrated into it, and again, running simultaneously with the NAS. There are even things like Ubuntu Station built into the Synology that allow you to, <coughs> um, sorry, I'm not even gonna cut that cough out, that even allow you to um, download an Ubuntu VM and run it as a standalone virtual machine from the HDMI output with a KVM setup, keyboard, video, mouse. But at the same time, all of QTS's services are running there in the background. It really is fantastic. You've got that extra layer of localized access on board with the network and the remote level access all built in there. But back to the TerraMaster, as well as highlighting with this device, what you also have is their own um, was it isolation mode. So built into their software, you're able to, uh, at the touch of a button, a single click, deactivate all remote access services to the device. Now, although it is possible on the QNAP, you would need to go into several settings in order to do it. And you may have other active services or other third party services that are not quite as configurable via the control panel in QTS that easily. The TerraMaster, on the other hand, genuinely has just a one click that will disable all remote level access only enabling uh, localized and you can even bind network IP. Secondly, it removes any uh, remote access PHP. And on top of that, any third party services and non TerraMaster services are then deactivated. There. Back to the QNAP now, and with the QNAP, we've got their surveillance platform. Now, I know this is part of the overall software thing, but I think on its own, it needs to stand out, because although TerraMaster have recently introduced their own surveillance service on here, it is a little, uh, entry point there, whereas Q, uh, QVR Pro on the QNAP NAS there, the 264, that arrives with not only eight camera licenses with the system and support with that KVM output to create a localized interface, but there are also a myriad of desktop and uh, mobile client tools that you can download that uh, kind of utilize local power for uh, client side handling a lot of the, of the surveillance management within the feed. All of this with a remote portal access via a web browser that allows you to browse through and go through all of the settings, change a lot of the parameters, access some of the cameras, although not quite as fluidly as you can on the client applications. And it's just generally much more enterprise level product along with certainly AI supported services built into it there, but I'll touch on that in just a moment. But Talking of software services, going for the TerraMaster does not necessarily limit you to TOS only there. And as good as that platform is for some of us, it's worth highlighting that a number of, re a number of users go for the TerraMaster platform because you can upgrade towards TrueNAS. Now it's worth highlighting both of these systems support the installation unofficially, that's really, really important because you may ruin your support from the brand here to install TrueNAS. But the um, path towards um, uh, upgrading towards TrueNAS and its ZFS platform is not as smooth on a QNAP as it is on the TerraMaster. Inside the TerraMaster is a little USB key. Remove the USB key, pop in another USB that's got the TrueNAS installation and boom, you can install TrueNAS on this. And if you want to reverse back, remove the USB, put in another one. Whereas the QNAP there is a little bit more finickety. There's an internal DOM and there's a lot more changing around. It becomes a little bit more tech intensive. So the upgrade path towards moving towards TrueNAS is a great tool smoother on the TerraMaster here, but we move back to the QNAP then, it's worth highlighting with the QNAP, we talked about the AI stuff, there is enhanced AI support on this device, not only because their AI supported photo recognition tool that they've got on there um, uh, is able to be a, a great deal more indexed and there's a great deal more pedigree behind it than that of uh, Terra photos on the TerraMaster, but on top of that, those AI supported services for facial uh, recognition, thing recognition, and uh, intelligent parameters are available on their surveillance platform and can be enhanced even further with the utilization of Google's TPU $20 to $30 upgrade, something that's not available on the TerraMaster, but is on that QNAP there. So you end up with just not only that better surveillance platform we talked about just now, but on top of that, just the AI supported services within photo recognition and the cataloging and the sharing. It's it's a better overall experience there on the QNAP than it is on the TerraMaster. But the TerraMaster has one little actual experience thing that they do like to talk about. And that is, even though both of these have got the same CPU, the TerraMaster claims to support up to 
32 gig of memory, which really does surprise me given that the CPU manufacturer says their maximum is 16 for this processor, but Terramaster are adamant that this not only supports the installation of 32 gig, but 32 gig is usable from within the system there. So again, it all depends what you want from the system and how you intend to use it, but that is 32 gig of memory. If you are looking at larger, more intense database services, you're probably going to see some real benefits there. Now, going back to the QNAP, talking about real benefits and particularly to both home and business users alike, we've got to delve deeper into that point about client tools because on the QNAP there, the TS-264, the client tools are just extensive. I think mobile tools, there is upwards of 20 different mobile tools, some of which are all completely tailored towards file services, all of them, some of them towards different multimedia, some of them bridging services, services there's surveillance tools on there there's everything that goes all the way down to desktop tools that allow you to synchronize and back up your entire system os and all of it in the first party which is really really crucial because although some of these are available for the terramaster the terramaster does not deliver them in the first party they either support some third party services or they just generally don't really roll in with their own tools because a lot of the money and the budget that goes towards these devices is going towards those internals there. So again, it goes more towards the hardware than it does to the software. And because of that, when you go to the QNAP platform, you just stand up with a little bit more bunts overall. And basically that is the big difference between these two devices. The Terramaster there is a combined, oh sorry, is more of a hardware purchase than it is a software purchase. I would say 70-30, maybe even 75-25. TOS is good, but it's not as evolved as QTS. The QNAP platform there is a little bit more 60-40, 60 for the hardware, 40, uh, uh, 40 for the software, but it's still very, very good software, very, very evolved, and there's just more of a priority towards first party services overall and i just think depending on you as the buyer whether you're going to be using first or third party services it's going to make a big difference which one of these two you go for but this has been um, my quick fast video on comparing the f243 from terramaster with the qnap ts264 we've rolled in oh a little over 12 minutes there let me know what you guys think i'm going to carry on making these short form videos rather than my 20, 30, 40 minute comparison videos because I think this really gets down to the salient points. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Maybe I've missed a point that's relevant to you or something you want to see in other videos. Do let me know. But otherwise, use the free advice section linked down below to NAS Compares. Use the free community forum on Ask NAS Compares with me, Eddie, and other NAS users. Use the links in the description to take you to Amazon if you are intended to buy these devices and this video helped you. Then you can use those links and that will result in a kickback to here at the channel, which helped us keep uh, things going. And of course, there are links in the description to the reviews we have for these devices as well as useful guides you might like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.